Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and what we are looking at here is uh, the game Manuel Aaron versus Carl Robach from Hastings, England, uh, 1962. Uh, I like this game because it turns into a, uh, you know, a, a very instructive rook end game with uh, seven pawns each. So we'll, we'll look at uh, the strategy for uh, how Black converted his positional advantage with uh, many pawns on the board. So on the 20th move, Black played bishop to d4, uh, initiating a uh, pin on the f2 pawn, and also uh, planning to play rook e2 and bring the other rook over to, uh, to really control the uh, totally open e-file that Black has. And in order to uh, in order to fix you know the issue of uh, the bishop on d4, which is very strong, White decided to play bishop e3. This gets rid of the powerful black bishop, but allows uh, an endgame with a uh, backward pawn on the half-open e-file, which turned into a decisive advantage. Uh, a move I looked at here, an alternative, is to play bishop d2 with the idea of coming to c3 and trading off this bishop but it turns out to be very slow. Uh, after rook e2, bishop c3 just trades on c3 and then plays rook a e8. And already uh, black has domination of the e-file and uh, could be followed by rook to b2, followed by uh, the double rooks on the seventh rank. So instead bishop e3 was played and uh, you know takes takes rook takes pawn takes and now uh, is a half open f file for white and a half open e file this this pawn is uh, is backward whereas black uh, doesn't really have a problem with his f pawn uh, so black played king g7 just you know centralizing the king before doing any other action and uh, white then centralized his king with king f2 and then black played f5. Now the, his pawn on f5 is very strong and you know controls uh, the e4g4 squares and you know is, is taking is a, making a strong pawn on white's half open f file as opposed to a backward pawn. Uh, to see why white couldn't have prevented that by playing pawn to e4, this stops uh, black from playing f5. But now is, is a problem tactically because black then gets on the half-open file, pressures the pawn. If uh, rook e1 defending you know, from the first rank, then uh, we have this problem uh, f5 because is a pin. The rook on e1 is unprotected. So black wins a pawn. Uh, rook f4 is a very clumsy defense. Uh, with this many pawns on the board, rooks are extremely ineffective you know, from the side you would rather be in front of or behind a pawn. Uh, so f6, and here the next move is going to be uh, g5, h5. This rook is just going to run out of space, and uh, black will be able to win the e4 pawn. So uh, that's, that's why king f2 instead of e4, and then black plays f5 to clamp down on the e4 square. So this follows king f3, rook e8, g3, king f6, and now to clamp to prevent uh, black from gaining space with g5, uh, white plays h4, and then black plays h6. So already we see black is building up for a possible uh, space advance, g5, uh, on the king side. He wants to keep his pawns together. He doesn't want to have to cap capture back with the king. So that's why he plays h6, and idea to play at g5. And so here, white brought his rook over to h1. This is a prophylactic move. This, the h-file is not open, but white is anticipating the h-file that could be open. Uh, because let's say black plays g5 here. Well then, white can open the file, captures check, captures, and rook h6. And all of a sudden, we, we see that white is getting some serious counterplay. Because uh, the rook has penetrated into the position down the h-file, which uh, opened. So instead, king e5 is centralizing the position of the king. Um, 
and after rook h2 because white really is on the defensive here he has no constructive plan there, there's no way to break through and get active counterplay he just has to play to prevent black's breaks and in, in such a situation uh, even though black has the upper hand positionally is it can be hard for him to uh, score because white can anticipate whatever bra break black is going to play so oftentimes it's not enough just to prepare an advance on one side of the board. You need to uh, open up two fronts to attack your opponent, and possibly three, as what happens in this game. So Black nudges forward his B pawn in preparation to play, you know, for an advance A6 B5 on the queen side, and then Rook G2 just waiting again. Uh, the Rook doesn't actually have to stay on the H file to be effective. If G5 then just takes takes, and then the Rook can come. To, to the open uh, h file. So rook f8, rook h2, and then a6. So now white swings his rook over to a2. So he's anticipating this file becoming open. So black brings uh, the rook behind the b pawn, and white just waits. And now uh, we see that if black plays this breakthrough uh, b5, then after a takes b, a takes b, rook a7, uh, with the possibility of. Uh, uh, maybe maybe coming into the e6 square to attack these pawns uh, is uh, is quite dangerous counterplay. So instead, uh, Black played rook e8. So he has two break two possible breakthroughs, but uh, he's not going to play either one. First, he's going to get his uh, you know switch around his major pieces, get his rook to the e4 square. So after rook h1, king f6, rook a1, rook e4, now this rook is well placed to support, you know, either uh, either breakthrough. And uh, after white waits another move, now finally black lashes out with b5. So black occupied the center post with his rook, and we see that he is advancing his queen side uh, now, and later on he'll advance his king side. So really three fronts black is using to gain the advantage. So a takes b5 was played now in this game is a, is a typical is a typical capturing sequence the players take with their rook pawns in order to uh, open up the rook file uh, get the rook pawns off the board. But I think maybe here is interesting uh, c takes b5 you know taking away from the center against principle because a takes b5 and now white can play a5. But after rook e7, you know, with the idea of blockading the a pawn, uh, black is going to play rook a7. Uh, the white rook is going to be tied to the a pawn. The uh, black rook is going to have to blockade to prevent the a pawn's advance. So the rooks and the a pawn are going to like exclude themselves from the from the game. But then black has the advantage in you know the king and pawn game because he can centralize his king, and the white pawns are much weaker than uh, the black ones. Plus, he has this extra queenside pawn. So it is, it's interesting that maybe not, not good enough. So a takes b, a takes b, and now rook c2. Uh, he could play c takes b5, but it is clear after rook b4 that the white pawns are too fractured. So rook c2, and now we see that white's, uh, white's pieces are becoming quite passive. Uh, king e5, uh, black improves the position of his king. So uh, white just waits again. And now black advances the g-pawn. So he's, he's advancing on the king side now. We've, we've seen he occupied the center post. Now he has two major pieces in the center. He broke on the queen side, and now he's breaking on the king side. So after king f2, he, he exchanges in order to fix the weakness on c4, in order to tie the rook, because white has passive rook on c1 and black has an, uh, an aggressive rook. Uh, and also black's king is more aggressive than the white king. So after f4, you know, takes, 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 we've reached a much simpler endgame, but is, is still even material. It is still real rook and two pawns versus uh, rook and two pawns. But if you look at the you know the positions of the pieces. Uh, Black's king is centralized. You know very actively considering going after the c c4 pawn. Uh, Black has an aggressive rook. White's rook is passive, and the white king is far away from the action. Uh, this 
this positional uh, advantage, uh, Black managed to convert to a win in uh, about ten more moves. But uh, it's, it's interesting to see how we got from a you know from a complex position, rook and seven pawns versus you know a winning advantage, rook and two versus rook and two. Uh, Black had to. Uh, Black had this, this very small advantage, the uh, the e file and the backward pawn, and he managed to keep his opponent's forces constrained. He prepared breakthroughs on two different flanks, and he actually had to use both of them in order to gain enough space to advance, you know, to reach uh, the critical position. So I, so yeah, thank you for watching. I think I mean the rest of this is is uh, is kind of easy. I mean the, the technique is interesting uh, to. Uh, you know, to win the uh, the c4 pawn and the you know the white pawn chain falls, but I mean is uh, is also interesting to see how Black managed to patiently squeeze his opponent from a, a position with many pawns into a position with a few pawns. Th uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.